In this lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about slope. We'll review what that is. We kind of talked about it in the last lesson, too. What we're going to talk about is a way to, um, to figure out slope without actually graphing the line. So on here, um, the, the first question that I have is, what if I have two points? I've got 2, 5, and 8, 1. Well, 2, 5, let me just graph that here. 2, 5 is here. 8, 1 would be like, let me move this out of the way. Uh, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, let's just put it like right here, right? So I've got a slope like this. Now in the past, you'd have to graph those. You'd have to count, okay, I'm, I'm here on the left, I go down 1, 2, 3, 4. So down 4 would mean this is negative 4. And then I'm going to go over from here, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, 5, 6. So it's negative 4, 6, which is negative 2 thirds. The question is, do I really have to graph that? Think about what you are doing as you are moving uh, down 4 and over 6. Really, what you're doing as you're counting these, you're figuring out what's the difference between the y value. How did the y values change and how did the x values change? Well, to do that, couldn't I have just done this? Well, for the y values to change, I could have just done. Um, I could have just done. Well, I'm starting at. I'm starting at five. Minus, oops, and then I'm going down to one. So that's a difference of four, right? So oh, wait, that's different than negative four. Hold that thought. And well, if I'm starting up here, right? Then I'm starting at two, and I'm going over to eight. 2 minus 8 is negative 6, which a negative, a pos negative divided by positive is a negative, a positive divided by negative is a negative. So really, doing it this way with the subtraction is the same thing as graphing it and then, and, then, and then finding the slope. If you think about what's easier, would you rather draw a coordinate plane and, and graph these dots, or would you rather just look at the difference between the points? So. Uh, I think the answer is, that, is you'd rather do the, um, the, the second thing here. So let's say, so for a formula for slope, if I've got two points, let's call one point, we'll call it x1, comma, y1. So that's point one. Point two is x2, comma, y2. Then slope, which the, the, the symbol for slope is m. Um, don't ask me why, it just is. We look at the difference in y. How much did I change? So we take y2 and we subtract y1, where I end up minus where I started. And then for we look at the change in y over the change in x. So we do x2 minus x1. That is the formula that will get us the slope without having to graph. Pretty easy stuff. So let's take a look at how that's used. So on here, I've got, I've got a line. You'll notice there's no dots on it, though, and that's okay. It says use the graph of the line to determine the slope of the line. So we're not quite using our formula yet, but this just shows you that um, slope, it doesn't matter if, if you've got all these points on the same line. So look, I've got a point like right here. I've got a point here. I've got a point here. It doesn't matter which two of these I pick. I can still calculate the slope. Now, I can calculate the slope. Again, I could go down 1 over 2. Or you could go down 2 over 4. Because either way, if I use the, the first point or the second point there, down 1 over 2, or I could say down 2 over 4, well, that still equals negative 1 half. So if you've got the graph already, you can just count. That's fine. Or you can still use the formula. The formula still works here. Let's say I am choosing uh, this point here, which is 1, 0. And let's say I use... Uh, 3, negative 1. So 1, 0, and 3, negative 1. Well, if I do that, remember I'm using the change in x, or change in y over change in x. So let's call this point 1, this one right here. Let's call this point 2. It doesn't matter which one you, you decide to be point 1 versus point 2. So I'm going to do negative 1 minus 0 over 3 minus 1. The only thing that matters is once I pick this one to be the second point, I've got to make sure I keep that same order. So if I do negative 1 minus 0, I can't do 1 minus 3. If I'm going from here to here, I've got to go from here to here. I'm doing the math here. Uh, negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. And you'll notice 
same thing. All right? Now, for this type of thing, uh, this is where we're going to really start to use this uh, slope formula we've used. Um, to be able to tell if two lines are parallel or perpendicular just by looking at the points. Remember I said, I've, I've stressed all year long, when we've talked about parallel and perpendicular, it's not by how they look. It's not about does it look like they'll touch or not touch, or does it look like they'll form a 90 degree angle or not. The real question is, how do their slopes compare? So for parallel, let me just remind you here, parallel means we have equal slopes. Equal slopes. And then for perpendicular, Perpendicular means they are opposites, first of all, and reciprocals. But you remember, reciprocals is where we take the, uh, like the reciprocal of two-thirds is three-halves. We take the fraction and we flip it. So to tell whether these are parallel, parallel or perpendicular, we first have to figure out what the slope of each line is. So if we look at line one, line one, I'll do in red here. Um, let's call this uh, let's call this point one and this point two. It doesn't really matter which is point one or point two. So I'll do five minus nine because that's the change in y over negative one minus one. Well, five minus nine is negative four. Negative one minus one is negative two. So that is a slope of two. So for line two to be parallel to line one. I had better come up with a slope of 2. If line 2 is going to be perpendicular, it's got to be opposite and reciprocal. So let me switch to blue here. Uh, I'll call 4, 9, point 2, and, and negative 3, negative 5, point 1. Again, it doesn't matter which one is which. Um, so for line 2, I have 9 minus negative 5 over 4 minus negative 3. So on here, I've got 14 over 7, because this is subtracting a negative, same thing as adding a positive, and that's 2. So since these are the same, they are equal, that means these are parallel. And I don't even have to graph the lines to be able to, to show that. Okay, uh, let's just to show you, I can go either way with which one is point 1 and which one is point 2. When I go down to here to, to the second example, let's call this point 1 and this point 2. So I'll go... Um, for line 1, negative 10 minus 20, all over 0 minus 6. Well, if I do negative 10 minus 20, that's negative 30. 0 minus 6 is negative 6, so that equals positive 5. And then for my other one, if I do a negative 11 minus 4, all over 2 minus negative 1. Well, 2 minus negative 1 is adding a positive. So this is negative 15 over 3. So this is negative 5. Now, a couple of things. 5 and negative 5, 5 and negative 5, we talk about their slopes, they are opposites. So that checks off. But reciprocals, is 5 the reciprocal of 5? No, the reciprocal of 5 would be 1 fifth. So these look like they could be perpendicular, but they fail the second half of the perpendicular test. So 50% is still failing. So these are neither, neither parallel, nor are they perpendicular. Okay, so that's how we can use the slope formula to figure out if lines are parallel or perpendicular. We don't even have to graph. For last example, uh, using slope can help us to graph a line very easily. So graph the line passing through 1, 1 with a slope of negative 1 third. Pretty easy process here. I'm going to put the dot at 1, 1. And I don't even need the equation of the line because I know to graph, if I have a slope of negative 1 third, I'm going to go down 1 over 3, so my next dot is going to be right here. And then if I go down 1 over 3 from here, that's also negative 1 third. So I'm kind of just filling this, this pattern in here, and there's my line just like that. Slope of negative 1 third passes through 1, 1. There you have it. So those are some of the types of things you can do with slope, as far as lines are concerned, we'll get a little bit more into um, how slope can help us to write equations of lines um, and things like that in, in future lessons. But there you have a formula for slope, but it's, it's, it looks like it's more intense than it actually is. It's just the change in y over the change in x.